Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Um, in reviewing the testimony today, it was not immediately obvious to me that the department and the services are uniformly recruiting in a way for the service members that we need for the battlefields that we expect in the future. Uh, the perception of military service and what it means to be a service member seems to be based on what was very different from what it means to serve today and especially going forward into the future. Um, that includes service members that not only reflect the diversity of our country, but also the interests and the skill sets that will allow us to fight more effectively across all domains, including intelligence, space, and cyber. I'm also worried that given the past and current challenges in meeting our recruitment goals, uh, coupled with attrition, that we are facing a growing gap in our ranks and that will overall impact our readiness posture, especially as we enter critical periods of intense strategic competition and potential campaigns amongst multiple theaters. Uh, to the entire panel today, would you please elaborate on how your department is thinking about recruitment in the long term, especially to ensure that we are going to be bringing on the type of recruits that can meet the challenges we will face in the future? And are we seeking to fill the gaps through potentially untraditional recruiting methods or recruits? You mentioned a few, but for example, older recruits, college graduates, working Americans looking to upskill or reskill. Um, so you can elaborate on that, please. Representative Takuda, if, if I may start. Um, uh, you know, we, as, as we look at uh, building for our national defense, we recognize that people are really at the core. They're the foundation of our national defense, and we continue to look for the best and the brightest. Um, and so the way that we are continuing to expand that um, is, is thinking about, one, how do we appeal to those young people who have these varied interests um, to continue to have programs that develop the workforce. So we have programs that are developing STEM, for example, Starbase. Uh, programs which help to develop the STEM field and grow that part of the workforce. Um, we, we also look to create greater levels of thought diversity, geographic diversity, racial diversity, gender diversity, so that we can draw from the best and brightest of America. And so in doing that, we've expanded our outreach and the work that we do through our marketing programs to connect with young people with authenticity in a transparent manner. That requires multi-channel marketing. It requires a level of frequency that will break through the noise that many of these young people, and we heard from, from a number of the, the uh, committee members that there's a lot of uh, the, how, how young people gather their information, all of that noise. So we have to break through that. And by doing that, we have to spell out the value proposition of how young people can start a profession in the military. The military is a great opportunity to either start a career, carry out a career, or launch a career. Because many people develop through the military, whether it's getting technical skills or leadership skills. So that's one of the things that we're doing from an OSD perspective. And that feeds into the way the services engage with young people as well. And I'll defer to my colleagues to talk specifically about what each military service is doing. Thank you so much for that question. So when I started at RAND 16 years ago, I um, started out as a strategist, and I bring that, I'm, a, I'm at my core a strategist, so I'm thinking about the long game on this. Um, and right now, I am building the Army of 2030 and, the tw and 2040. And so I am thinking about the skill sets that we need as we pivot to multi-domain operations, and how do we effectively maintain our readiness as we do that. Um, so we are opening our, one of the things in our transformation is that we are opening the aperture um, on our prospect market because we realize that we need higher level skill sets for cyber and these kinds of things. We have a cyber JROTC pilot in which we are trying to um, help citizenship um, and also expose folks to the opportunities in the Army for things. So those, these are the kinds of things we're doing. Thank you, um, and I appreciate it. I'm sure I'll get the responses from the others perhaps later at another time, but in the interest of times, I completely agree with you, Ms. Schaefer. We are looking for higher level skill sets, so I do think we need to expand our market, not just to high school students, which I think is important, and college students, but also those that have perhaps left higher education, are now in the workforce, because those are valued skill sets and individuals that could really start to fill the gaps that we are seeing now. I did want to touch upon one more thing. In the testimony, it was noted that 33% were disinterested in military service due to the possibility of sexual harassment and assault. One in three. Discrimination, we look back at old records, 2017, 31% of black service members, 25% of Asian service members said that they had been harassed or assaulted during their service time. This is something we can control. We can't control whether they think they're getting paid enough or they're worried about physical or mental harm. 
but not being assaulted, discriminated, sexually abused, that is something within our purview. So I would like to know exactly what we are doing to eliminate this as one of the deterrents we are facing to recruiting people into our military service. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I yield back.